Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we finally went through the relay to Albion and ended the episode at London. Just arrived, haven't done anything at all there. And we have an entire region completely unexplored. So, let's see what London has to offer. An approach from a gloomy middleman. No sooner have you pulled into the sightings than a long-faced man in a battered coat approaches your locomotive and asks for a moment of your time. The story was unlocked because you have veils of 40 or more. So it sounds like a good thing then? Hear what he has to say. He fiddles with the bent brim of his hat as you approach. His face is solemn as a basset hound. An offer of work. His voice is nasal, his eye is gray. I will not wish you a good day. You are a person of intelligence, and the day is manifestly miserable. I myself am newly afflicted by the gout, which has made my mornings a parade of wretchedness. No doubt you have your own misfortunes, into which I will not pry. Instead, let us move to the happier subject of business. You've come to my attention for the very reasons you avoid others. Your subtlety and your cunning. My employer may have work for you. Profitable work, but perilous, and profoundly illegal. Should you be interested, seek me at the Admiral Benbow Inn here in London. With that, he takes his leave, tutting at the thickness of the fog before he dons his crooked hat and vanishes into the crowd. I'm intrigued. I kind of like this person. Day is manifestly miserable, newly afflicted by the gout, kind of a little bit like TMI, but... <laughs> I like him. Wit and Vinegar, A Smuggler's Tale. By the way, I'm still a bit sick, so my voice is kind of strained and I might have to clear my throat quite a bit. Thankfully, I don't feel like sneezing constantly. <clears throat> Ambition Jubilation Day. Oh, let, we're going to save that for like probably last, but we're going to finally go back on to... Well, our ambition to find the truth. Oh god, there's going to be so much to do. Uh, uh, how many shops? Are there new ships? I is there better tier equipment? I can access my bank. Of course, which is nice. It's just comforting to see that it's there. Crown and Misery Company. <laughs> what kind of a name is that? Crown and Misery. Scrupulously regulated, the Crown and Misery Company takes pride in the engines it manufactures. Well, most of them. Yes, they, there are some new ones. Uh, this, I think, is... Yeah, this is my original one. And this is also another one that we saw before, but I think these two are new. Actually, mm, the bit of your class escort might not be new. That might also be old, but this is definitely new. Aggravating class juggernaut. A thundering puissance, the terror of the skies, the harbinger of conflict. That thing has a shit ton of health. Two armor, so it's going to get even more health from the armor. It's got one normal, but one small armament slot, one big. You know, it just occurred to me... Wait, 23, 15... Is this comparing base stats or upgraded stats? 10 is plus 2 over mine. Yeah, okay, good, good, good. Um, these stats are comparing against the base stats of my ship. So I don't need to take into account the fact that some of these things are upgraded on my ship. Like... It says my ship has 8 people it can hold, but obviously I'm holding 16. But... Yeah, knowing how it compares to your ship's original stats is a lot more important. Anyway, um, story stuff. St. Dominic's Station, your aunt is here, dear God. <laughs> London's chief station, draped in Union Jacks and studded with... Oh. Time's up already? Hold on, I gotta go check uh, apple pie that I've got in the oven. Okay, I'm back. London's chief station, draped in Union Jacks and studded with bronze busts of her enduring majesty. The platforms crowd with people. If the throne of ours is London's heart, this is its carotid artery. 
Your aunt is here, dear God. Somehow she has found her way to the high wilderness. She's trying to get your attention with the frantic waving of her horrible hat. I know you've seen me. Listen, I've quite exhausted my possibilities here. I'm a serviceable quartermaster. I have friends everywhere, and my scones are to die for. How's that for a curriculum vitae? Now, let me aboard. Is she even your real aunt? Either way, you'll have to deal with her. Scones. Yeah, we've had enough scones after the Port Avon incident of 1905. Employ them as your quartermaster. Filial piety demands as much. And she does make a damn fine scone. This will get you a quartermaster who will increase your iron by six and your mirrors by two. What is this? You unlock this with one savage secret. Or say no. Locomotives are no place for aunts. You can always recruit her later, though you will risk her wrath. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, so, uh, Quartermaster is the one officer position that I've never gotten. I have nobody for that. But, if you look at all the things I have here, it's not like you only have one person that could possibly fill a role. It looks like you have at least two. And there's a good chance I might meet some more here, and in the other regions. Meaning, I don't have to take the aunt if I don't want to, I'll, and I'll probably still be able to get a Quartermaster at some point. As much as I want to take them on board, because I'm curious what their whole deal is, I I have to push that aside, my desire to see as much content as possible. I'm going to push that aside and go with role-playing Elizabeth. Elizabeth hates their family, and their family hates them. I mean, I guess I could say that they're like a cool aunt or something, not like the rest of the family, but given the way they're described... They sound really stuffy, and they look very rich. Uh, no, Elizabeth hates this person. Elizabeth hates their entire freaking family. No, hell no. Not now, auntie. A raised eyebrow. There's a long silence. At last, I see. There is a snap as she shuts her handbag. I'm glad to see you looking well. She goes to walk away, but suddenly turns on her heel, a thoughtful expression on her face. I would hate to think this little unpleasantness should change things between us. Goodbye. She leans in to give you a little peck on the cheek. You now have plus five terror. <laughs> yeah, fuck this person. No, Elizabeth would not have them on board. She's not going to get stepped on by her family. Oh god, we have so much to do here. So we have the Jubilation Day, we have the quest to follow up on the box. They wanted to, remember they wanted to be delivered to somewhere in London? The creature that's inside of it. Okay, well I I need to start somewhere. I want to do stuff that's not like main quest. Let's explore London. Liberated from her prison below the earth and elevated to the heavens. Prickled with chimneys, mantled in sooty smog. Here are old, proud buildings, transported block by pale block to the sky. Here are new edifices of soaring steel and stone and gleaming glass. The ultimate achievement of Victorian ambition, unhampered by terrestrial concerns. London is a feverish brew of aspiration, empire, and appetite. Transported block by pale block to the sky. So they, did, they didn't just build new buildings, but they actually moved the old ones. My god. Oh right, Percy Blythe, we need to bring them home here. Uh, Jesus Christ, there's so much to do. Again, just one thing at a time. Let's bring Percy Blythe home. The brooding corpse of the hero molders in your hold time he was home I don't like the description fruiting corpse it 
An inquiry at the ministry in one of their more approachable offices near the station results in an armada of black-clad auditors descending upon your engine. Questions are asked. Crew are probed. Poor Percy is prodded, rolled over, prodded some more, and then covered in sheets and bundled away. The senior auditor goes to shake your hand, but thinks better of it. I have a reward here. You will, of course, be sensitive to the memory of the lieutenant. We would not wish to hear any unauthorized stories of his heroic demise circulating. Uh, okay, I am going to be sensitive to the memory of the lieutenant because we spoke with him. And given the horrible things that happened and the fact that basically their dying wish was that they be remembered as they were, I'm definitely going to uphold that. But I'm not going to do it because they say so. I'm going to do it because Percy said so. Unauthorized stories? I'm guessing we're going to see a lot more of that in London. Things like unauthorized stories, like having to authorize just the spread of information. Remember, there's the ministry-approved literature that probably comes or is approved or disapproved in London. Percy Blythe has returned home. Goodbye. God, that was such a sad and amazing story. 500 sovereigns and 1,000 experience. We are super close to a level up, actually. We can continue the Inkosh's driver's quest. Uh, the, the Navigator? What's their name, though? They're not just called the Navigator, are they? Could be the Gloomy Middleman. Look for the Baroness of Hell. We can't do that, unfortunately. <laughs> Let's help the incautious driver hunt for the verdant fragment. Their connection to its progenitor should assist. The more places you search, the easier your search will get. Failing here will not harm your quest. Your searching for the verdant fragment gives you a 0% chance of success. Okay, well, might as well get started. I need one incautious driver to do this quest about the incautious driver. Fair enough. Yeah, so if you don't remember, um, it's been a while since we've done the Incautious Driver's Quest. The last thing we did was take them to the Nature Reserve because, well, we took them to the well, and then we took them to the Nature Reserve after that, and I guess like the spore that's inside of the Incautious Driver, its mother or its parent or something is in the Nature Reserve. I think there was a Tower of Fungus somewhere in there, and it, the Incautious Driver went to it, and was hoping that the fungus would leave and be done with them and go back to their their parent, where they came from. But apparently it's not done searching. And they want to find some sort of, like, errant fragment, the verdant fragment. It's like an errant fragment of the fungus that's gone astray and is somewhere here in Albion. And apparently it needs to go back home. So that's what we're searching for. Failure. Surprise. The unconscious driver spends hours sniffing at the air in search of familiar spores, but to no avail. We should try somewhere else, they reluctantly decide, shuffling with uncharacteristic glumness back towards the train. No sign of the fragment in London. Let's go with the navigator to the ambassador's house. Actually, hold on. What is your name? Fortunate Navigator, that's what they're called. The Navigator waits for you. I've been away some time. Your vouching for me would make a good impression. I want to make her proud. I forgot who we're trying to make proud, but I remember they wanted to visit, like, old... old family... friend or something. The house is small, but is in, a, in an expensive location. It's well kept. The windows are clean, the steps freshly swept. Asphodel is flourishing in an urn by the steps. It still feels like home. The navigator gazes at the front door. It feels strange to know I'm just visiting. Ring the doorbell. The navigator stands beside you. He fidgets with a loose thread on his sleeve. Startled but delighted, the grieving matriarch herself opens the door. She sees the navigator and yelps. She laughs. It disintegrates into tears. 
the navigator enfolds the woman in a hug. The matriarch glares up at the navigator fondly. I've been so worried the moment I knew you'd sign up. It's so dangerous out there. What if something had happened to you, too? She hustles the pair of you into the drawing room. My husband's at work. He'll be disappointed to have missed you. The navigator has been welcomed home by his friend's mother. Ah, so it is a friend that we're going to visit. What if something had happened to you, too? So then something happened to, what, the friend? The grieving matriarch is determined you'll join her for tea. She even refuses to let the servants assist. She's rushing towards the kitchen when the navigator intervenes. Uh, we can't stay long. I mustn't impose on the captain. I promise I'll come back soon. He draws the matriarch close and lowers his voice. I came to ask, may I borrow the key? I haven't been able to pay my respects. The grieving matriarch looks mortified. Uh, either stand there and listen or give them some privacy. Hmm. I am really curious about this key. And my, you know, Elizabeth has a really high veil skill. They are good at lurking and gathering information. That's kind of what they do. Yeah. Elizabeth just stands there and listens. For the old lady to react so strongly, this must be interesting. Ooh. That's a level up. Remorse. The woman takes an iron key from a side table. Please keep it. I'm not going in again. Will the captain take you to the Empyrean? She searches the navigator's face. You look tired. Are you working too hard? I'm fine. I'm first officer. I'm doing well. You're all skin and bone. Is the captain feeding you? The matriarch turns angrily towards you. Please, don't. The navigator's voice is barely audible. When Alton... I asked them to contact you. I asked... The matriarch rushes from the room. She returns more composed and carrying a well-read book. You should have this. She refuses to let the navigator leave till he's promised to write and to visit again soon. Speak to the fortunate navigator aboard your engine. The navigator's been given the key to Alton's family tomb in the Eagle's Empyrean. Speak to him aboard your engine to continue. I gained salon stewed gossip from that. Juicy. And a thousand experience. Let's go speak with him right now. Persuade them to talk. Takes two savage secrets. Even off-duty, the navigator is constantly checking the crew. He's avoiding being alone. Let him know that you've seen this before. He has to share his burden. A needed confidant. The navigator joins you in his cabin. Finally, the words tumble out. I thought I was alright. I just got on with my work, and I was doing well. He reaches beneath his bunk to pull out the book the matriarch gave him. Alton read this all the time. He'd act it out, do the voices. It's the epic of King... Gus Gassar? I'm going to say Gassar. Alton knew the true me. He shared his clothes, helped me bind my chest the first time. Got me into my first fist fight. The navigator sits up proudly. He was my best friend. When we were children, I made a promise to him. The navigator stares blindly at the book. Let's just pause for a second. Helped me bind my chest the first time. So they're a trans man. That is so cool. So we have this... We have a trans man, the uh, uh, fortunate navigator, as one of our first officers. We have one of our chief engineers, the incautious driver, is non-binary. That's really awesome. That makes me very happy. A 
What did he promise? And why does it prey on him? When we were growing up, we would go exploring together. We'd go on great quests, do mighty things. The navigator takes several breaths before continuing. We'd be heroes. People would write stories about us. I'm exploring the skies, and the navigator turns his face away. He didn't even get to leave home. He wipes his eyes on his sleeve and stands, resolute. I'm not going to break my promise. I will give him adventures worthy of King Gazar. Please, Captain. I want to go to Eagle's Empyrean. I'm breaking him out of his tomb, but I'll need your help. You'll need a visa to come with me. The London Embassy there will give you one. He frowns. If you've not been to Eleutheria, the relay is near Hybris, in the Reach. Okay, so the Eagle's Empyrean is in Eleutheria. Well, I think it's a little bit early to go there. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll continue this quest in like 40 hours when I'm done <laughs> with Albion. The Navigator would like you to help him steal his friend's body from a graveyard in Eagle's Empyrean. It sounds bad, but... No, it's a, it's a good thing. Promised to go on adventures, so... He's gonna steal their body and take them on adventures. The promise. They promised. And I will help them. Let's attend a meeting with a gloomy middleman. He conducts business in a smoky corner of the Admiral Benbow Inn, down in the smoggy lower levels of the city. The middleman is nursing the same glass of beer he began the evening with. Ah, comrade. To claim it is a good evening would be duplicitous, but it is at least unevening, and here you are in it. <laughs> he waits until you sit. My employer can open a profitable door for you. There are goods that Her Majesty's government do not want to see bought or sold. Prohibition begets scarcity. Scarcity begets profit. One example of this contraband is red honey, gathered by the Midnight Rose at Titania. Unfortunately, supplies have dried up. Prove your value. Find out why, and fix the problem. Well, I can see why supplies have dried up. Titania is in ruins. It needs to be repaired. And in fact, I think one of the things I needed to do to help out Titania was like I needed to, I think I needed to visit Albion or somewhere in Albion. And like, they wanted me to scout what would be the type of architecture they would go with or something. I don't remember what it was exactly. This is the Midnight Rose of Titania to learn why their delivers of red honey have slewed. Let's wander the streets. How often does one find themselves with a spare moment in London? There's a palpable tension in the air today. Ministry officials walk the streets, their expressions stormy. A newspaper at the station proclaims the date. The anniversary of the blockade of New Winchester. <laughs> Well, that's awkward. I've just been thinking, too. I'm surprised nobody's just, like, arrested me. I mean, I'm, I'm like, totally an enemy to London. I haven't taken the blockade of New Winchester, have I? No, I haven't. Yeah, it's still here. Um, I'll do a level up at some point soon-ish. Hey, Pestilence, that's new. Let's actually look at that. Since arriving in the heavens through the avid horizon, you've contracted an unlikely illness. You are turning imperceptibly slowly into glass. The progress of the disease has halted for now, but where has it taken root? What? Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> imperceptibly slowly, I'm turning into glass. That is incredibly cool. Either start it beside your heart or in your lungs. Okay, well, we'll get back to that later. That is really cool. Oh, that was actually a new description when I wandered the streets. 
The light of the clockwork sun is fierce. It sears away the smog and lights, and lights up the glass and smoky stone of London's buildings in a brief moment of splendid radiance. Right, they have a clockwork sun here. Because there's no living sun in Albion. I think the only living sun is in the Blue Kingdom. Mmm, Silken Salon? The generous princess manages many affairs of court. She cultivates alliances, forms opinions, sets trends, makes introductions, suggests promotions, and dismantles reputations. She attracts rumors like a lantern attracts moths. It's said that she fears the light of the suns, and that her gifts inevitably destroy the recipients. <laughs> She can sometimes be found in her salon where she welcomes visiting captains. Oh, I can share salon stew gossip here. For one, you gain 15 sovereigns and 10 experience. That's very little. I mean, I know these are fairly easy to get, killing marauders especially, but that's so little. If I gave up all of my gossip, I would only get like, I don't know, 300, a little bit over 300 sovereigns. Oh, you can share bigger packets of gossip, <laughs> and you get better uh, return, like five for 85 sovereigns. That's still that's still pretty rough. You can donate a ministry stamped permit. Don't have many of these, just two, and I need one every time I want to go through the relay, so no. Connect the generous princess with your cryptic benefactor. Ah... I have four of these. So that's just basically trading those for money. I assume that means you lose them, though, after you call in a favor. So... I mean, I haven't seen any uses for cryptic benefactors before this, so it's not like I have any particular reason to save them, but at the same time, what if there's a better use for them than just money? Let's share an inordinate amount of salon stewed gossip. Just once, just to see what happens. The princess sends for wine. It's a long evening in which much is shared. When you stumble out into the smog, she pats your hand. Don't worry, she tells you. I shall take all of this in hand. I guess I'll also give him one cryptic benefactor. I just want to see kind of what happens with that. She examines your benefactor's credentials with a magnifying glass. Then she asks you to wait in her parlor while she conducts a discreet, uh, conducts discreet inquiries. Wine, red as an empire's heart, and cheese, soft as her highness's voice, is brought for you. When she returns, she's smiling brightly. I think we shall be very great friends. Used up one of the cryptic benefactors. I just think of that as like calling in a favor. Because it seems like that's pretty much what this is. Like somebody kind of owes you. Somebody pretty rich or in a position of power owes you something. 300 sovereigns, 250 experience. Yeah, so I'm just at St. Dominic Station, by the way. So even all these things, once I'm done with all these things, there's still more. Oh... The Office of Works. The Office of Works is a bustling bureaucratic enigma. Behind its red bricked flanks labor numberless clerks and surveyors. What mysteries lurk within its memoranda, its chits and its receipts? What exactly are its eponymous works? No one is sure, but in a droughty loading bay an unflappable foreman purchases supplies to complete outstanding work orders. Provide the foreman's requirements to earn payment. Offer your services. He sniffs and leafs through a dog-eared ledger. Yeah, sure. Gainful employment. The Office of Works, God bless her, has very particular requirements. Very particular. Let's have a look. They need two rolls of thirsty bombazine and two uncanny specimens. Well, uncanny specimens I could do right now, but I've never gotten a single roll of thirsty bombazine. 
If you dislike the current work order, this will request a different one. You can only make such a request once every 15 days. Hmm. No, this is fine. It looks like you do have to have both things, though, to turn it in. It's not like a prospect where you can only turn in parts of it, and that's fine. So I wonder if this is instead of prospects? Like, maybe this is the equivalent of prospects at London, it just works differently here, or do I still have prospects? Oh, you do still have prospects. Well, let's grab some. I have room for both, right? Yeah, got three slots. Enough tea to fuel the sun. The clockwork sun does not, of course, run on tea, but the battalion of engineers who maintain it surely must. Every month, a new tender for three caddies of dry tea is offered. Regular as, yes, clockwork. Clockwork sun lies a long way to the north of London. Yes, a long way. Right, remember how Albion seems to be significantly bigger than the Reach. Which means I'm going to need significantly more supplies if I want to make a long journey all the way to the edge. That's a very far way to go. Especially in uncharted territories. Of course I'm sure I'd find stations and whatnot along the way. I hope. Yeah, let's take that. Fulminous festivities. Fireworks for Parliament. A zealous undersecretary is already planning next year's Guy Fox Night. A vital celebration of parliamentary democracy and high explosives. He wants the festivities fireworks to be seen and heard all the way in London, and is prepared to pay well for three carefully packed crates of sufficiently dangerous munitions. Floating par Parliament lies a long way to the south southwest of London. I appreciate the fact that it says a long way, so you kind of know, like, you should really set out for a long journey. You can't just, like, yeah, just pop over there. Now, it says three carefully packed crates of sufficiently dangerous munitions. Is that a different type of munition? Or is that just a colorful description? Uh, caddies of dry tea. Gourds of Corister Nectar. Now, it seems like the thing in bold is the exact name of the thing. So this is carefully packed crates of sufficiently dangerous... Hmm. The sufficiently dangerous part is not capitalized. I, th I think that might just be normal munitions. Anyway, we're not going to get to the places to deliver these for a long, long time, so I don't need to worry about them. Right. Back to the station. So, Office of Works, done. Silken Salon, done. I don't need crew. Uh, I think for the station, that just leaves Jubilation Day in the house without windows. Well, I'll save Jubilation Day for later. The house without windows. To find the address given in Captain Whitlock's will, you make your way through little-used streets in one, in one of London's lower, smoggier levels. On a secluded courtyard flanked by the backs of warehouses and factories stands a tall gray house with one door and no windows. When you knock, a blind butler answers. Yes? Deliver the black box. Fulfill Captain Whitlock's last request. Yes. The end of the line. The butler is pleased. Ah, our resident has arrived. Please bring him in. Everything has been prepared according to Captain Whitlock's instructions. As you maneuver the black box inside, you ask what those instructions were. She has arranged for Master Jacob's convalescence with us. I understand the young gentleman has suffered from a prolonged illness which has left him unable to speak and afflicted him with a delicate disposition. The affairs of the house have been organized in such a way as to never inconvenience him. He will require no visitors. An extensive library has been provided for his edification. Privacy is paramount. With the box in place, the butler produces a key from his pocket, but waits for you to leave before using it. Thank you for your assistance, comrade. If Amelia were still with us, she would thank you. Good day. You leave the house without windows behind, the matter of Captain Whitlock's legacy finally discharged. 
God, please tell me this quest goes further and there's more things to do. This is so fascinating. Convalescing with us. Do they actually know that they come from the Blue Kingdom and that, like, how are they going to be kept alive, I wonder? They must have some sort of a chamber that's free of any outside light or something, right? Basically a bigger version of the box. Otherwise, aren't they just going to die? Like what was happening when I opened it and talked to them for a little bit? They need the box to keep them from dying because if the sun's light reaches them at all, then they die. They're defying the suns just by being alive here, I think. Something like that. 2,000 experience. Sky story. Savage secret. Oh no, is that it? I think that's it. It must come up again at some point, right? That can't be it. Alright, gonna save the Jubilation Day thing for last, so let's check out the other two-story places. Steam and Sapphire Yards. Oh my god, there's so much to do. Its engineers will conduct brisk locomotive repairs for visiting captains, but their chief responsibility is the production of small but essential components used by a, different, a dozen different engine manufacturers. Oh, we got something for the fatalistic signalman. Looking up an old friend. The only address the signalman has for his friend is Shed 4 at the Yards. He will only reveal her first name, Charlotte. Unfortunately, Shed 4 is off limits, ringed with a wire fence and under the guard of a pinched watchman and his barely tamed hounds. Ooh, we can trade an otherworldly artifact for access to Shed 4. The watchman is a hoarder with a morbid curiosity about the indigenous occupants of the high wilderness. The watchman coos at your gift and adds it to the incomprehensible jumble of objects crowding his shelves. It goes between a roll of crackling parchment, which he claims originated in the library of the scribe spinsters, and a rubbery skull. He waves you through, and the grumbling dogs watch petulantly as you slide, or sidle past, rather. Shed 4 is a huge storehouse. Beams of solemn starlight slant from grubby windows in the roof. The hulks of old locomotives rust here, from battered tugs to fat old liners once packed with emigrating Londoners. The signalman heads off between the wrecks. The signalman stops before a stately old wreck with flaking navy blue paint. This is her. None worked harder on the Isambard line than she did. You look at the nameplate. The Charlotte Guest. Ah, look how they left her, he says gloomily. That's not right. You tidy up. You put things in order. You turn the lights off and close up before you go. She deserved better than this. We can purchase the remains? Well, not right now, but what are we missing? Must be in favor with the New Street line. Okay, or... With a cryptic... Okay, yeah, so I do want to keep my cryptic benefactors because they can be used for stuff like this if I need them to pull some weight to uh, get something like this put in a museum. That belongs in a museum. Then... That's what they're used for. Definitely not going to sell them, then, because it's not like I get them very often. Uh, yeah, so this is to put them in a museum. This is to give them to the New Street line. I don't know what the New Street line is. She'll never fly again, but her bones and her sinews could be put to good use. The New Street line has engines to maintain. Well, we need to get in their good graces for that, and I guess when we do that, we'll learn what they're all about. Leave Shed 4 for now. You have other business to attend to. You leave the rusting corpses behind. Shed 4 was too hushed and still. The bustle of the yards is a welcome relief. Yeah, so I think to continue the quest, I have to purchase the uh, the Charlotte Guest. Macquarie's Tobacco Shop. 
The sign over the door once read Macquarie and Son Fine Tobacco, but since then someone has crossed out the word fine in a fit of honesty. <laughs> then, on a separate, more ominous occasion, they've crossed out and Son. <laughs> okay, so I'm guessing from that that their tobacco is not fine anymore, it's just shitty tobacco and the Son betrayed them or something? The building has embarked on a rapid descent into squalor. The paint peels, the windows are caked with grime. Inspect the wares. Corey watches suspiciously as you examine his shelves. Cheap tobacco, bad prices. The selection is unimpressive, as is the quality. Neither Albion nor The Reach has found a genuinely good replacement for tobacco, though increasingly frantic smokers have tried lighting up virtually every example of sky flora that has been discovered. <laughs> a few skyfarers mill about, examining the lower grade flavors and speculating on exactly what Macquarie is cutting them with today. The more expensive brands are untouched in their glass cases. You'd wonder how this place managed to stay open if it weren't for the fact it's so obviously on the brink of closure and probably collapse. Well, it seems we can't do anything with it right now. Investigate rumors of an underground railway. 